Hey guys, Persistent Programmer over here, and today we're going to do another Lee Cook question, majority element. Okay, so given a size of, uh, given an array of size n, find the majority element. And what is this majority element? Well, the majority element is an element that appears more than n over two times, where n is the length of the array. So let's look at this input where we have three elements in the array and we're going to do n over 2, so 3 over 2, which gives us 1.5. So this is the threshold we need to compare against um, each of the frequencies in our array. So we can see that the frequency of 3 here is 2, which is greater than 1.5. So this element does qualify. And the frequency of 2 is only 1, so 1 is less than 1.5, right? So it does not qualify. And this is really important for this question. Oh, oops. So this is really important uh, when they say that you may assume that the array is non-empty and um, the majority element always exists. So these are the exception conditions that we don't need to check for in this question. And they're telling us that, yes, this um, there will be an element that is uh, qualifies for this condition. Okay, so yeah, let's look at let's look at some solutions and um, discuss how we can solve this problem. The first solution that immediately came to my mind when I saw this problem was to create a dictionary and map all the frequencies of each element. So here we have three and three occurs twice. So uh, we can say it's uh, frequency is two and then two occurs one, one time. So it's frequency is one. And then iterate over um, this map and check for the condition. So we'll just check the values and see if it is greater than our um, threshold, which is in this case 1.5. So let's look at another example here. So we have um, an input array like this. So for this array, n is 7. And 7 over 2 is 3.5. So we're going to compare against 3.5. And we can see that the occurrence of 2 is 4. So 4 is greater than 3.5. And this is how we'll get our answer. So this solution is pretty straightforward. Um, we just create our dictionary and then iterate um, over the dictionary and return the element with our highest frequency. And the time complexity for this is O of n. Okay, let's quickly look at this code and then we can see how we can optimize um, this solution further. Great, so I'm back in the code and the first thing I've done is I've created my threshold, uh, which is n over two. So we're taking the length of the nums array and dividing it by two. And I've also created my uh, frequency dictionary here. And the next thing I did is I'm iterating over uh, my nums array and I'm just populating the frequency of that number. So if we see the first time, the frequency is one. Um, and if we encounter it again, we're just adding to that frequency. Okay, and after all of that is done, um, I'm iterating over each item in um, the dictionary and I'm just checking if that um, frequency is greater than the threshold that we defined up here. So after doing that, I'm just returning the digit. And we know that the question says that there will always be um, an element which has a majority. So that's why I did not put another return outside this for loop. Okay, so let's go ahead and submit. Okay, great. So that works. Now, instead of creating this additional space for this frequency dictionary, is there a way we can optimize this space um, by just using our nums array? So that is optimization we will look at next for this solution. Great. So the optimization that we are going to decide now is um, how to optimize the space for this algorithm. Like, can we solve this problem in constant space? And that's where Moore's floating algorithm comes in handy. And I will just walk through the high level idea of what this algorithm means first before looking at the code. So if we had a candidate profile like this, where we had 
A, A, B, B, and then A. Um, so we can see here that, okay, well, if I was at this position, then my winner, my winning candidate would be A with the majority of votes, right? And, okay, well, let's say A has two votes. And then if we're here, we know that, okay, well, B has two votes. And this is a tie, but our question says that the majority element always exists in this array. So that's why this this sentence is very important. And we know that the last element here, this is the determining element that determines um, which candidate wins. So, okay, so if these two were canceled and our winning candidate here is A, is there a way we can devise an algorithm to keep count of these um, candidates as we iterate through the array. So that's essentially what um, the Moore's voting algorithm is trying to solve. So let's look at another example here. So here, let's say our um, array looks like this and we have our first candidate A. So our winning candidate at this point is A and well, when I move to the next item in the array, I see that, well, A has one vote and the next element is not A. So when that happens, I do a minus one here from my previous um, candidate and I can see that, okay, well, B has one vote here and we will just shift our candidacy to B. So for now, we can say that B is our new candidate. Okay, so that's fine. So we we add one um, counter to our B and then we add another counter and B has three votes now. And then when we're back at this A, well, we do the same thing. We minus one from here, but B still has the two votes. So in this case, the majority is the candidate B here. So that's the same method we will use to solve this problem. So every time we see a different candidate, we just minus one from our previous candidate's count. And if this brings us to a zero, what does that tell us? That means that that candidate's votes are no longer valid at that specific point. So in this array, um, if, we, if we cut the array here, we had a zero over here because is votes no longer matter as we have the same number of A's and B's, right? Um, so that's the general idea to solve this algorithm. Now, um, let me summarize what we need to do in our code before we look at the code. So what we need to do is create a counter to do this um, minus one from the previous candidate's frequency. And what we're gonna do is we'll just start with this candidate as our majority candidate and then iterate through the array to find who is actually the majority candidate. And then we're just gonna minus one if we see a next element um, that is not the same candidate as our previous element. And if the counter is zero, then we move on to the next candidate because as I mentioned, that means that the votes have balanced out. Okay, so the time complexity for this is the same, so it will be O of n, and the space complexity will be done in place. So we're not taking up any extra space. We won't be creating a dictionary or map. So that's why this is more efficient than our previous solution. Okay, well, if all of this makes sense, then let's look at the code. Okay, so I'm back in the code and what I've done is I just um, commented out my previous solution with the dictionary and here I have the more optimized solution for this problem. So what I've done first is I've initialized my count to zero and I just set the majority candidate to none initially. And then as we iterate through our nums array, what I'm doing is I am just setting um, the majority candidate to num if the count is zero. So in the first case, what will happen is this majority candidate will be initialized to the first uh, number in the array. And then what we're doing is 
we're checking if the number is equal to the majority candidate then so what this means is if we have like three three so if the next um, item is the same as the majority candidate then we just add um, a count to that majority candidate right so we're it's like they got the vote so that's why we're uh, increasing the count here and if it's a different L, if it's a different candidate then we just minus the count so we're decrementing the count here and in while iterating through this root loop at uh, any point if our count is zero that means we know that that previous um that previous candidates votes doesn't matter anymore because there are enough votes from the new candidate so that's how it equal to zero and if we if that case happens then we're just setting the majority candidate to that next number in the array okay and lastly what we're doing is we're returning the majority candidate okay awesome so i have um both these codes in um, the description below so check that out if you want to try it yourself okay let me submit this code awesome accepted i hope you enjoyed this video if you like my videos please subscribe to my channel all right happy coding guys